Hey creative people, in today's HitFilm Express tutorial, I'm going to show you how to attach text to walls. Today's video tutorial will be rated 3 out of 5 on the difficulty scale. It is a little bit more difficult to do and it will require some messing around with, but the concepts should be pretty easy to understand. So today I'm going to be using the free version of HitFilm, HitFilm Express, but of course, if you do have the pro version or you have the Mocha plugin, it's probably best to use the Mocha plugin tracker because that's way better for this kind of stuff. It's basically designed for this kind of stuff. But of course, today we're going to be jumping into the free version and I'm going to show you some workarounds to create this attached text effect in the free version. Note that we're actually going to be attaching this text to the surface of a wall. I already have a tutorial on how to attach text to objects. So for example, to this rock here, that's something I did in another tutorial. So you can go and check that out in uh, the description below. I'll leave a link in the description, maybe a card, whatever. I'll link it somewhere. Uh, but you can go check that out. Otherwise, we're just going to learn how to attach it to walls, which is actually a little bit harder in today's video. So let's start off with just our shot. I've got a shot here of these brick walls, of this brick wall, sorry. And we're just going to attach our text to this wall here. Now there's an issue here, which is at the end, ideally, I would like the text to cover all of this area of the wall here, for example. But as you can see, we have this little bit jutting out here, and that's going to cover some of the stuff at the beginning. So I'm just going to start off uh, by making it in this portion here where we can see at the beginning and by the end it'll look a bit small and just be in this section but we can adjust for that and we can make some changes but we should be good to go for the most part. Just make sure that of course your footage is going to be different to mine so make sure that you uh, understand what your footage is and why you're going to have to change it. But let's just jump into it. So I've got it in my media panel here and we're just going to go straight into a composite shot. If it's in the editor panel or if it's in the media panel it doesn't matter just go right click make composite shot and just hit OK. This will make a, com a composite shot, which is where we can do compositing, and it's much easier to layer stuff on top of one another, and you can track stuff uh, in a composite shot, which you can't do in the editor. So that's what we're going to do now. But before we track stuff, we're just going to create our text. Just go New Layer, Text, and it'll create a new text layer. Then go to our text tool over here, and just start typing. Once you've typed all your text, you can highlight it all by double clicking or sorry, by dragging over all your text or you can hit Control A to select everything. Then you can go in your text panel and adjust all of the properties such as font, font size and all of that. Now you're probably wondering why I've made everything so huge and the reason for this is that we want it to basically fill the frame as best as possible. So I've made it pretty big, it doesn't really matter what size it is, um, but we can always scale it up later. But if you make it a pretty good size for your comp, then you should be good to go. So now that we've got our text, it's time to start putting it on the wall. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to track our base footage. So let me explain to you basically how this is going to work. Because our text layer basically has four corners, we want to track four corners on here where we want our text layer to be. So we're going to track one point of this wall, another point here, another bottom right point and then a bottom left point and we're going to then put the text layers bottom left, bottom right, all of those points and just track them and keep them on those points. So it sounds pretty complex but it should be pretty easy once we get going. So let's start off with our tracking. Just hide your text layer by clicking on the little eye there next to the layer and then open up the layer and you can see a little tracks menu here. It should have been fixed but in old versions of HitFilm if you have an old version uh, the plus sign wouldn't show unless you extended this, so make sure you extend this so you can see the plus sign. And then just click it, insert tracker, and we'll get a new track. Now, we have this huge track panel over here. So what you can do is you can just drag this, for example, into the trimmer up here. Or alternatively, you can go into the workspace comp area and just choose comp compositing. And that'll give us a big viewer and it'll give us a dedicated space for our track. I'm just going to keep up in this compositing area for now and that way everything's kind of just laid out pretty nicely uh, but you can always go ahead and reset your layout if that's what you so desire. So in changing all of this workspace um, you might have stuffed a couple of things up. First of all you just want to make sure you're selecting your tracker here then you want to make sure you're in your track panel somewhere and you want to also make sure you're on your layer panel over here. If you're on your viewer I'll explain the difference between these two now. The viewer shows the whole comp so for example, your text, everything that you've added in your comp. However, the layer just shows the layer that you've selected. So if I select my background layer, it'll just show that. And if I select my text layer, it'll just show the text, although text layers are a bit different, so it doesn't actually show the text layer. But we can show 
the source layer, the background layer, and if we click on our tracker, then we can use the layer to adjust our track point. So make sure you have the layer here selected as well as your tracker and you have your track panel open. So let's begin. This is our track point over here. You can scroll in to zoom in. The red box is basically the feature you want to track. So anything, any pixels within this area, it will track. And anything within the green box is every frame, it'll search for our feature, everything in the red box within the area of the green box. And it's handy to adjust these because if you have a lot of movement in your clip, you will have to have a big green box because the red circle will move around a lot. But if you don't have much movement, like in our clip, for example, you can just keep the green box relatively small. So let's go ahead and adjust this to be where we want it to be. I'm going to make this our top left corner track. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You can use right click to hand over your, your comp like this to move around. And I might just make our point over here somewhere. So I'm just going to drag inside, drag the point over here. Now make sure you don't mess around with this anchor point in the middle. Just keep that in the middle. You can adjust the size of your red box by clicking and dragging on the corners like so. Make sure you choose a high contrast area somewhere. So I don't know if I want to go that high or that low. Yeah, that looks good. I might just choose some area like this. And generally the smaller the feature you're tracking, the better results you'll get. So I'll track something pretty small like that. And then because I don't really have that much movement in my clip, I'm just going to make the other box, the green box, really small as well. Then I'm just going to go back to default. And uh, you'll notice actually I've made a bit of an error here. I've gone all the way two seconds into my timeline, which is not very good. So I'm just going to go to the very beginning. That way I can track the whole footage through. I'm just going to move this point into place again. And I'm just going to move out. And we're going to track, as I, as I mentioned before at the beginning of this video, we're going to track from the beginning. Because if we track from the end, um, you'll notice that some of these points, for example, will disappear as the wall covers them. So we're just going to go and track everything from the beginning. So make sure your point is in the correct place then go over to your track panel here. The type you want to leave on single point because we're only going to have position. We only need the position of one of these points and we don't need rotation or scaling. Method optical flow, you should just leave all of this on the, on the default. Optical flow usually works best and template match uh, works pretty well as well, but you need to know what you're doing uh, to select each one of those and to adjust the options. So you could just leave it by default. And we just want to hit the track forward button here, which will track this forward. If we're starting from the end here, we can hit the track for, uh, track backward button. Or if you're having a particularly difficult time tracking, you can track forward one frame at a time and adjust it every frame. Otherwise, we're just going to hit track forward and let it track this point over our footage over the whole, what, 10 seconds of our clip. So we're just going to let this run and I'll be back with you when it's done. Oh, by the way, before we finish this track as well, I just want to mention that if it stops, for example, or if it stuffs up, you can just go to that frame and reposition your track and start tracking again until it stops or it stuffs up. Then you can go back to that frame, reposition your track and track forward again. Just reposition the point uh, every time it stuffs up and you should be good to go. But now we've finished our track and we can look at, look, look at it playing back and it looks pretty good moving through over time like it should. Now it's time to do something with this point. So this is step two, apply to layer. So to apply this movement data, we need to create a new layer which will uh, have this data applied to it. So go new layer here and select point. This will create a new point layer. Point layers don't have anything visual. They're just like basically null layers if you use After Effects or something like that. They just hold data basically. And this time we just want to hold a position data uh, which will hold our position for this point. So you can hit F2 on your keyboard or right click rename and then you can just type in uh, top left to make sure that we have our top left point. And if we just go back to our tracker here, make sure the purpose is transform because that will apply the movement of this layer to another layer. You can also select stabilize if you want to stabilize your own clip based on, uh, based on the track here. I have a whole video about stabilizing your footage using this track if you want to go check that out. But otherwise, you can just select transform, select your layer to be at the top left. And then because we've only done one point for position, we'll only be able to do X and Y position, but that's what we want. So make sure you take both X and Y position and just hit apply. Now something's interesting happened. So if we go back to our viewer, you'll notice we have our background layer, we have our text as normal. And if we select our top left point, 
we now have a point, and if we play back, it's actually attached to that track position. And if we open up uh, the transform here, we can see it's got all of these different keyframes data here where our track has been to uh, adjust the position right there. So that has worked pretty well for the first one. I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of them again right now because we need another three of these. We need a top right, we need a bottom right, and we need a bottom left. So let's go ahead and do all of those right now. Open up our tracker again, let's go to the layer. And right now we need to create a new track. So I'm just gonna select this track, hit F2 or right click rename. And we're gonna rename this top left. And then I'm gonna add a new one, click on it, rename. I'm gonna go bottom left, I think. And in a test I was doing, I made this quite small, I made it down here. So I might do it a little bit lower just to give us some more room. So I'm just gonna select this one, move it down here, for example, adjust the point like so, and make sure we're at the beginning and just let it track. Okay, cool, so our track's done. Let's go through those steps again. New layer, point, rename this, bottom left, then go back to our track, make sure it's transform, select the layer bottom left and hit apply and we should be good to go. So let's do the next one now. So here we have our bottom right tracking uh, tracker. And if we just go ahead and select all of these, we can see where our current positions are at. I'm just gonna go back to the beginning. And we can see that we wanna make sure that these uh, are with our, aligned with our perspective. So you can see that the top left really is just straight down, we get the bottom left. But the bottom right, if we just do it like a 90 degree angle here, you can see that that's not actually with the perspective. 90 degrees is all the way down here along this brick line. So we're going to select some point over here to track because that's where it is 90 degrees from our, from our point there in this world. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that bottom right, drag it over and I'm gonna continually go back and forth to make sure I get the right position. So for example, somewhere down here and because of this pesky wall over here, I'm just going to attach it to as far right as I possibly can, like so. And we're just gonna hope this track works. We're just gonna play it back. And yep, it looks like it's doing well. So we're just gonna leave this and uh, we'll be back with you in two seconds. So now we've got all of our four points. So let's go back to our viewer, close all of this up and let's look at our points. We've got them all selected and they all look pretty good. So now it's time to attach our text to the wall with these points. Go ahead and open up your text, select uh, your text layer and show it if it's hidden and uh, go ahead and apply this effect, the quad warp effect. Just drag it on and you'll notice nothing really happens at the moment. But if we go into our controls and open up our effect, You'll notice we have top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. And those are these four points here. You can see them in the corners of the video. By default, they've been put here so that by default, nothing happens. But if you drag these, you can see how it adjusts the perspective for us like so. And really, I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the tutorial because if you don't have a moving wall like I do in, in our tutorial today, you can probably just use the quad warp to put this text onto your wall. But now with our moving points, we can actually attach these points to our points. So just go ahead and do that, it's pretty easy. Just go top left, use the layer, our top left point, which is really nicely done for us. Top right, go top right, bottom left, go bottom left, and bottom right, go bottom right. Before you would have had to adjust these uh, values, but they've been updated, so now it all zeroes out when you automatically select the points. Then. Just go to the beginning and watch it play back. We've got our text attached to our video. That is pretty cool. Like I said, there's tons of ways you can adjust this. So for example, if I think this right, uh, right area here is sagging a little bit, what I can do is go to the bottom right and I can actually adjust the position of it with this track information still intact. So I can go ahead and move this up, for example, like that, and I can do that to the top right as well, for example, if I wanted to. But yeah, it's very easy to customize. And we notice that it's really only in this portion and while the track data is not really gonna work properly, we can make a good enough guess. So just go to the uh, bottom right position and you could, for example, extend this all the way out here 
if you really wanted to. And you could do that with the top right layer as well. And so now we've got our text attached here, but um, if we just go from the beginning, you can see it kind of goes over here and the track is not really 100% accurate, but it's good enough. You could go ahead and create a mask here or whatever. So that's basically how you attach text uh, to walls in HitFilm. I'm just gonna actually undo all of that. So I'm just gonna zero out all of these positions just so that we have our proper attachment. And that's basically how you do it, but there's one step if you really want to. What you could do is you could go ahead and apply the displacement effect. So just the regular displace, displacement effect after your quad warp and select the source layer to be that background there. And because our wall comes out to the left more and not really much to the Y, you want to adjust your horizontal displacement like so. And that'll make it kind of attached to the wall. If you don't know, the displacement effect adjusts the pixels of the layer you've got the effect applied to by the amount that this layer has. So for example, if this has really light areas, it'll move the pixels in here a lot. But if it has dark areas, it'll move the pixels here less. And so that's where you get this texturing going on because where you have bright bits on this layer, it'll move it a lot. And where you don't, it'll move it less. So it looks like it's kind of attached to the map of the wall. So if you wanted to go for that kind of thing, you could, you could also adjust the uh, blending mode, perhaps make it uh, a different color, for example, and attach it like that. But basically that's how you do it in HitFilm. If you did enjoy this, then please give this a huge thumbs up because uh, it's one of my favorite effects and you guys have been, I mean, you guys have been asking it for a long time. So, uh, well, here it is. And if you want more content just like this, of course, you can subscribe to my channel. I do make other HitFilm Express tutorials, a ton of other HitFilm Express tutorials, and also other video editing and other software tutorials as well. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay shiny.